evaluate the expressions. The first expression is inverse cosine of sine pi over three. We begin by evaluating the inner expression of sine pi over three. To do this using the unit circle, we first sketch the angle of pi over the three radians in standard position. With well, the initial side is along the positive x-axis, now we rotate counterclockwise pi over the three radians, and therefore this is the terminal side. The terminal side intersects the unit circle at this point where x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta. And therefore sine pi over three is equal to square root of three divided by two, and the expression simplifies to inverse cosine of square root three divided by two. Inverse cosine of square root three divided by two is equal to the angle in the interval from zero to pi radians that has a cosine function value of square root three divided by two. And since the cosine function value is positive, the angle will be in the first quadrant. We now look for the point on the unit circle in the first quadrant where the x-coordinate is equal to square root three divided by two. So here's the point we need, which means this is the terminal side of the angle in standard position. We know the initial side is here, and therefore inverse cosine of square root three divided by two is equal to 30 degrees, or in radians, pi over six radians, or one sixth pi radians. So the expression simplifies to 30 degrees, or one sixth pi radians. And since the original angle is given in radians, it's safe to assume the preferred answer is one sixth pi radians. Next we have inverse sine of cosine pi over four. We first evaluate cosine pi over four by sketching the angle in standard position. This is the initial side, this is the terminal side, with a counterclockwise rotation of pi over four radians. And since x equals cosine theta, cosine pi over four is equal to square root two divided by two. The expression simplifies to inverse sine of square root two divided by two. Inverse sine of square root two divided by two is equal to the angle in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, or the sine function value of square root two divided by two. And again, because the sine function value is positive, we know the angle will be in the first quadrant. So now we look for the point on the unit circle in the first quadrant where y is equal to square root two divided by two, which notice how is the same point we use to find the cosine function value. Because y is equal to square root two divided by two, we know the angle we are looking for is 45 degrees, or in radians, pi over four radians, or one fourth pi radians. 45 degrees, or one fourth pi radians, is the angle in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, that has a sine function value of square root two divided by two. Next we have inverse sine of cosine pi over six. Let's first sketch pi over six radians in standard position. We are looking for the cosine function value. It says cosine theta is equal to x, cosine pi over six is equal to square root three divided by two. The expression simplifies to inverse sine of square root three divided by two. Inverse sine of square root three divided by two is equal to the angle in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. That has a sine function value of square root three divided by two. Again, because the sine function value is positive, we know the angle will be in the first quadrant. We look for the point on the unit circle where the y coordinate is square root three divided by two, which is this point here, which means the angle in the range or output of the inverse sine function that has a sine function value of square root three divided by two is this angle, which is 60 degrees or in radians, pi over three radians or one third pi radians. And for the last example, we have inverse cosine of sine pi over two. To evaluate sine pi over two, we will sketch pi over two in standard position. The terminal side intersects the unit circle at the point zero comma one, and since y is equal to one, we know sine pi over two is equal to one. The expression simplifies to inverse cosine of one. Inverse cosine of one is equal to the angle in the closed interval from zero to pi radians, where the cosine function value is one. So we look for the point on the unit circle from zero to pi radians, where the x coordinate is one, which is this point here 
which means the initial side and the terminal side of the angle we are looking for are both along the positive x-axis, and therefore the angle in the closed interval from zero to pi radians that has a cosine function value of one is zero degrees or zero radians. I hope you found this helpful.